What made you come here? How'd you even know? I don't know. I just came here. Because Washington Park, that kind of a, a, a situation is very, very common. So something inside of you said, come here to this park. There's got to be a reason you came here. You can't, you can't shoot the movie, you shoot nothing. Can you? I didn't think about it. You're going to feel bad for the guy sleeping in, in his Mercedes? <laughs> I think it was my quarter with another one. It's like a, two different fucking worlds. Think about what I'm saying. It's like a beauty to it. I was spending my 19th birthday in Washington Square Park when Hollywood finally came up to me and introduced himself. By that time, I'd already heard stories about the countless guitars he smashed. But Hollywood wasn't as violent as the other members of the asylum made him seem. He told me his side of the story. Born and raised on the West Coast, Hollywood would eventually turn to music. And after a great loss of friends to heroin, he would fight for his own addiction and move to Tennessee. From there to New York, and to Washington Square Park. And then he asked me for my story. When I told him I had taken a week to live homeless in the park, as part of a research for my documentary, he told me to go home. But eventually he changed his mind. And he had shown me Washington Square Park as I had never seen it before. When Hollywood had first come to Washington Square Park, he was in search of musical inspiration. And once he was here, he found a constant flow of it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, first I'd like to welcome everyone to Washington Square Park, the entertainment capital of the world. This is a neighborhood that traditionally people have come to because it's small enough to see who's here and also because in the good old days, the rents were such that there were people that could come here with a very short walk. So this is a very good meeting ground. Tompkins Square Park, which is a possibility, is not as beautifully set up as this to accommodate people, and it doesn't have the tradition that is in Washington Square Park, the former home of very famous people. Just Every outspoken fucking person in the world has done it here. So this guy's story is very much the history of this park. And in this park, Hollywood would find countless of other musicians spending all hours of the day mastering their instruments. They came from all corners of the world, playing out to be the characters they had always fashioned to be. I'm part of the asylum for six years, years, seven. But it wasn't until Hollywood was welcomed by the asylum, an underground music group, that he would find a home amongst them. Some of them had lived in the park for as long as 20 years, sleeping like a pack of wolves to survive the winter months and holding no obligation to anybody but their own kind. Everything of material value was released and shared. That was probably one of the more important laws of the asylum, especially when it came down to the time to play. Anybody who stays here enough, with enough people, you will create your own society. At any given time, an asylum member might be busking, leaving an open guitar case to raise in enough money to buy whatever necessities the group needs. Most of the time, it was vodka. Less experienced musicians might play for anyone who would listen, taking the opportunity to fine tune their songs. But a better form of practice was a jam session with Hollywood, as he would always give feedback in a lesson or two. Musical intelligence was one of the more higher prized possessions any of these men held as the older ones and more experienced musicians held more respect within the community. It was their focus, a religion based off of music that offered them modes of communication and expression. It gave them relief from the blistering cold that was surrounding them as they would play into the night in order to keep their minds focused. It was during those nights that we sat out in the March blizzard 
but I thought I had found a society that has struggled through time and attempts to preserve what seemed to me, a set of values that had been lost. With them, I had found my focus, and I could better understand why some of them had been there for as long as 20 years. Hollywood warned me again. It was better not to get too close to the asylum, for things were just about to change. Many members of the asylum fear that NYU, a major sponsor of the reconstruction of the park, will gentrify it and employ special park security to get rid of the undesirable noise. As the first phase of the reconstruction nears its end, another shift begins. A younger and louder generation rises, unknowing to the living grounds that they seem to invade as they treat it like a stage. It was rare to find the park empty and quiet, but when it rained, even the asylum would leave their home. During these moments, the park would sleep, and Hollywood would hardly speak, but he would sing sad songs of a man in exile, away from his wife and son. I would listen to his songs, knowing that he was homeless by choice. I would often wonder why he just wouldn't go home. But to Hollywood, his home was anywhere, anywhere they needed to be. It was in Washington Square Park, though, that he had found something. Something that made it very hard for him to leave. He played until his fingers bled, and then turning to me, filming him, with his fingers bleeding over the strings of his guitar. He told me of the great sacrifices that artists had to make, and he continued playing. I thought I had captured the moment with my camera, but I spent the remainder of that night in a dark room trying to wind it up. The roll of film came back destroyed, and then I wondered, was this what he meant? A few months later, I've come to give Hollywood the first copy of the film. He watched it and then called his wife. I thought he might be on his way home. I had hoped to be on his way home. But every time I come back to the park, I see Hollywood sitting in the newly reconstructed fountain, still singing the songs of Man Out for Days. Did you get close to these people or are you just filming them and that's it? Did you get close? See, I should shoot a movie about me asking you these questions. It's fine to shoot a movie as an standing back. I, my movie's in my head.